Hi there, my name is Starling. I am a clinical aromatherapist, and I want to talk today about what are essential oils. I've noticed that there's a lot of misconception about essential oils and what they do, what they are, and where they come from. So today I want to talk about what they are, and in another video I'll talk about where they come from. And then I want to do more videos about what they can do and looking at individual ones and also looking at individual health issues and um, involving essential oils. So if you have any questions about a specific essential oil or about a health issue that you or a loved one has, you can leave a comment in the description box below and I will get back to you personally or quickly do a video answering that. But uh, please feel free and you can also um, ask to have a private conversation with me and we can make that arrangement as well because I am more interested in everybody being healthy and safe than just trying to sell essential oils so I can, you know, rank up the pyramid. So essential oils, are they a concentrate from a plant? No, they're not. Essential oils are not made from a bunch of basil going into a pot came boiled down and the leftover liquid. That's not what they are. And it's just so f funny that I need to say that because it seems like most people think that is what they are and it's th that's not true. Um, what we do know is your favorite smells can come in essential oils like lavender and rose, patchouli, citronella. And we also have seen in our lives things that are called fragrance oils and often we'll see that like in Glade plugins and things like that. Are they the same thing? No, they're not. Uh, fragrance oils, they're synthetic, they're made in a lab, and they're really, really cheap. A uh, great comparison is rose essential oil from my wholesaler that I go to as a retailer and an aromatherapist. I can get uh, Bulgarian rose absolute five milliliters uh, for 50 bucks. Whereas I can get 100 milliliters of red rose fragrance oil for six bucks. So there, that's a pretty big difference. And I will do a video about why some essential oils are more expensive than others. But I want to talk about just today what they are. So essential oils come from plants. And they can come from a variety of different plants. They come from trees and they can come from the sap of a tree, the leaf, the fruit, the flower. They can come from flowering plants like roses, jasmine, lavender, roots like vetiver or ginger, and grasses like patchouli and citronella. And they're all extracted in different ways depending on what they are and I'll do a video explaining the difference between like distilled and cold pressed and absolutes and things like that but they all come from parts of the plant but the thing about essential oils and while they're they are not a um, concentrate of a plant or the essence of a plant is because the essential oils are not made throughout the entire plant Outside of some herbs where you can pretty much just take the whole thing and put it into a distiller and get your essential oils, you're, you're using a very specific part of the plant. And that could be the flower petals for floral things and the roots and the leaves and things like that. And some plants can have what's called a fixed oil. So that's like your coconut or olive oil and essential oil at the same time. And they have nothing to do with each other. Uh, one example is rose. Rose has an essential oil that is found within its blooms. Well, it creates a fixed oil that is created within its hips. Rose hip oil, I highly recommend it for your skin. It's wonderful. But uh, you can also have a plant that produces more than one essential oil. And my favorite example, although all citrus trees kind of do this, I'm going to talk about the bitter orange tree. And uh, yeah, so pretty much all citrus trees create three different oils. But the bitter orange tree creates the bitter orange peel, neroli, which is the blossom, and pettigreen, which is from twigs and leaves. And they don't smell anything alike. 
They have nothing to do with each other. I'm not going to describe what an orange smells like. I'm pretty sure most people know what that is like. And bitter orange and sweet orange smell really similar. So just go smell a navel orange and you'll get the idea. But neroli is the blossom of the orange plant. And it is very expensive. Uh, my wholesaler, where I get stuff pretty, pretty cheap... It's about $80 for 5 milliliters, and there's reasons for this, and I'll do a video on that. But um, yeah, it's really expensive, but it's absolutely lovely. It is. It doesn't smell like jasmine at all, but it's similar to jasmine in that it's very earthy and a base note kind of a smell. Pettigreen, which is the twigs and leaves of the bitter orange tree, is uh, woody yet very bright and energizing. If you like Palo Santo or cedar wood, you should check out Pettigreen. So we have plants that have one essential oil, plants that have many, and plants that produce a fixed oil and an essential oil. Are there plants that create no essential oils? Yes, most. Essential oils are rare in the plant world. There's only about 400 or so essential oils that are made commercially. Of that, about 100 are fairly easy, easily attainable by the average person. From there, only about 50 are super common. And from that, only about 20 are available in most like health food stores. And you don't really need more than that. But one of the reasons that this is, is because we don't know what's in most essential oils, which is why you shouldn't eat them. Even the ones on the shelves can be dangerous. <laughs> My pet peeve, don't eat essential oils, please. So why is this? Well, essential oils are not the essence of the plant. They're not a concentrate of the, of the plant at all. They are from a cellular gland that exists within one specific part of the plant and only specific plants have these why we don't know there's theories one is communication there's theories that some essential oils by some plants are used to attract pollinators which makes sense for some things. And there's others that think that they're used to communicate between themselves, which is um, not actually too crazy because when you cut your grass, that fresh cut grass smell is your grass screaming in pain and warning the other plants that there's a massacre happening. Uh, you're welcome for that image. So yeah, that's all they are. That There's a rare liquid found and a very specific parts of very specific plants and it's formed in a cellular gland within that specific location and that's why basil essential oil is nothing like actual basil because everything else that makes up basil is not in that essential oil and what's interesting is that some of the best parts of plants cannot get into the essential oils and i'm going to do a video talking about that but my favorite uh example of this is frankincense if you need to use frankincense for boswellic acid purposes which is if you have um arthritis specifically in your knees you want boswellic acid but you can't get it through the essential oil because it's not in there it's not from the same part of the plant. I mean, it all comes from the resin, but the essential oil is strictly the liquid found in these glands and nothing else. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I hope this clears out some confusion that you may have. And again, if you have any questions at all about essential oil safety, with just general use or with certain health issues, please leave a message below and we can also talk about that privately. 
um, if you want, if you don't feel comfortable giving out too much information in the comments section, but um, just say so and then we'll make some arrangements. So again, my name's Starlene. I'm a clinical aromatherapist and for the love of Alan Rickman, don't eat essential oils.